Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a past exam question. This particular one is going to be focused on implantation. We've done a lot of videos on the menstrual cycle, hormones, that kind of thing. But I wanted to do something different today because we often overlook these kinds of questions and we think, oh, they're not going to ask anything about implantation or gestation. And actually, there is a lot of key pieces of knowledge that we need here. This particular question, I have rated it hard. Um, it probably might be for some of you on the medium level as we go through it, and that's great news because it means you're really well prepared. Um, but if you are not so sure about connecting your um, female reproductive knowledge with your uh, reproductive strategy knowledge, then you might find this to be a little bit more challenging and you might find some of the descriptions and explanations a little more challenging. Um, so I would range the difficulty between that. If you guys would like me to do an advanced question, then please leave a comment down below in the video um, and I would love to make a more advanced section of questions for those of you who really want to push themselves in their exams to see if they'd be able to do them. Now, as always, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are in grade 12 and you're looking for a little bit of extra help, you should think about joining my YouTube membership where we do live lessons. You get access to my study guide for free and so much more. Now, I'm going to get into the video now. I'm going to walk you through the questions and how to appropriately answer them. If you want to pause the video now, attempt the questions first, and then see how I break them down, then do so now, please. Now, as always, I tell my students to start off their exam looking at the question, unpacking the diagram first before answering the questions. And the reason for that is if you spend some time studying the diagram, figuring out what you're looking at, labeling it, doing a little bit of ground foundation work, you will find you will get less questions wrong. Um, and you'll actually answer them a lot faster, saving you time. So just spend a little bit of extra time working on the diagram and it's all worth it because you won't stutter, you won't get stuck. Okay, so let's have a look at this particular diagram. It says the diagram below shows a developing human fetus. And now let's uh, familiarize ourselves with some of these labels that it wants us to um, look out for. So looking at structure A, it is a structure that is growing out of the embryo and into the wall of the endometrium. And hopefully you recognize some of those long extensions as being villi. Now, this is no longer the chorionic villi. Um, it would have been in early pregnancy, but because there is already a fetus here, um, I'm comfortable in labeling A the placenta. Moving on to B. B is a zoomed in, uh, let's say, image of what we find at that dotted line. And I'm hoping that you recognize the dotted line as being the umbilical cord, because that's what attaches the fetus to the placenta. Now, it's got uh, two, let's say, blood vessels moving through it. One, it says, going to the mother and the other one going to the fetus. And it's labeled B. Now, B is attached to the um, fetus. So it says it's going to the fetus. Now, that probably means they want you to identify which one is the vein and which one is the artery. And this is a very common a misanswered question. It's because we don't know what veins and arteries do in the umbilical cord and we confuse them with other veins and arteries in the human body. There is a simple rule that you must use and you will never get a vein or artery question wrong if you use this simple rule. Veins go to the heart, arteries go away from the heart. So when we are talking about this particular fetus, if blood is going to the fetus, it is going to its heart, which means that B must be the umbilical vein. On the other hand, the blood vessel going to the mother would be the umbilical artery. 
And that is how you tell the difference. You do not tell the difference between blood vessels based on the type of blood they are carrying. In other words, nutrient-filled blood or oxygen-filled blood. That is not a good rule. I would never use that because that is how you make mistakes. Moving on to labels C. Now, C is in reference to what appears to be this fluid that the embryo is floating in, and that is going to be amniotic fluid. And finally, at D, D could be misidentified if you are not careful. And let me show you why you need to be careful. D is in reference to this outer layer over here. It could be misidentified as the amniotic sac, but that is not the amniotic sac. The amniotic sac is this structure over here sitting just beyond the amniotic fluid. Instead, that outer layer, which if you follow along, goes all the way to where the placenta is growing into the endometrium, that over there is going to be our chorion. Again, this is where a lot of matrix make a mistake in identifying the difference between the chorion and the amnion. The chorion is the outermost layer that will produce the placenta. And then sitting underneath that or below that is where we find the amnion and then the amniotic fluid. Okay, so we've done our labeling. Let's go on to our questions and unpack those. First things first, 2.5.1, it says identify part D, which we've already done. So that means we're quickly going to answer that. Uh, whoops, let's just change my spelling there. The Corian. All right, next one, quick, quick. State two functions of the fluid in part C. So now what is the purpose of amniotic fluid? Well, it is prevents mechanical injury. And another one that I would use as a safe answer, in other words, an answer I can guarantee they will accept, would be something like temperature control. It keeps the baby a nice temperature. Another one um, is, is dehydration. And that is because obviously the amniotic fluid is a fluid, so it keeps everything hydrated. Going into our next question, it says, describe the development of a zygote until implantation occurs. And this is for four marks, which means we are going to need to provide at least four developmental points starting um, at the zygote. So you can't Talk about the sperm and egg cell. That's not going to get you any marks because that's before a zygote. You are going to have to start your explanation from zygote all the way to implantation, knowing that you're not going to get a mark for just saying zygote. So how would I go about answering this? Well, my first point I would say is that the zygote undergoes mitosis, right? And it forms a solid ball of cells. And that solid ball of cells is called a morula. That morula continues to undergo mitosis or it divides and it forms a hollow ball called a blastocyst. Now, I've given five points here, um, and I would say that this is a safer answer to give. Um, because it's a description question, allow the marker to select what they want to award the mark for. In other words, it's not always wise to just write four things or four sentences or four bullet points. Rather, we want to write four full ideas or full statements. And um, I would let the marker decide of the five things I've written here, which four will they award? Now, remember, I can only do that because this question, number 253, is a describe question. If it was an explain question where it said explain two reasons, 
and I gave them three reasons. Remember, they will mark the first two. They'll ignore my third one. So we can only get away with this when it's very open-ended like this, and they're just looking for a general description. Let's move on to the next question. It says, state two ways in which part A functions in protecting the developing fetus. So we look up at what we labeled A as, and it is the placenta. So what is the function of the placenta? Well, there are a couple of functions. The first thing is it acts as a ultra filter. And that means it filters against like pathogens. So it protects the fetus from infections from the mother. The next thing that the placenta is responsible for is it removes metabolic wastes. Remember, that is where wastes are going to leave the fetus via the mother's, um, or should I say, via the umbilical artery to the mother. Um, and those are the two ways in which it protects the fetus. There are actually way more than that. Um, you could have also said something along the lines of um, something like, the site of where antibodies are exchanged between mother and baby. You could also say that the placenta maintains the endometrium, which therefore keeps the fetus safe so that development can continue, so there's no miscarriage. But I would say that these two are like safe answers. In other words, they're very certain to get you marks. Moving on to our next question, 2.255. Identify blood vessel B. We've already done that. It is the umbilical vein. Very often people will get that one wrong. And last but not least, it says describe how the nutrition of a human fetus differs from that of an oviparous organism. Now, this is fascinating because this is a lovely crossover question to vertebrate reproduction. So again, if you're not very well versed on vertebrate reproduction, you won't be able to answer that because now you're going to be sitting there thinking, but what is the difference? So I just want to remind you that when they talk about oviparous organisms, they are talking about organisms that are inside of an egg, which if we remember, eggs in oviparous animals, they have a yolk. But in viviparous animals like ourself, we, remember, have a placenta, right? We don't have a yolk. We don't lay eggs. So now it says, keeping this idea in your head, these two ideas, eggs versus placenta, describe how the nutrition of a human fetus differs um, from that of an oviparous animal or organism, and that is for three marks. So let's talk about human fetuses. So human fetuses have a placenta and the placenta is responsible for navigating nutrients between the mother and the fetus. So when we talk about the placenta, we are going to talk about the, and I also just realized I forgot, oh, I didn't spell umbilical cord right earlier over here and over here because I'm writing so quickly. Sorry, everyone. This is umbilical. This is how you spell it. So the placenta has the umbilical cord, and the umbilical cord allows for nutrients to move from the mother to embryo. Now, oviparous organisms cannot do that. And so what we would do to summarize our final point would be that oviparous animals get their nutrients from a yolk or the albumin, but I would focus on the yolk more than anything else. And to just so show you where I would put the ticks, you would get a tick for talking about the placenta allowing nutrients to move from the mother to the embryo, whereas in oviparous uh, animals, they get their nutrients from the yolk. And so that's how you would end up getting three marks for that particular question. 
Now, here is the official memo. You will notice that this memo has a lot of emmys in them, which basically means you're allowed to give any of the answers um, as long as you have maxed out the mark allocation. So you can get any two over here, but only the first two. Any two here, but only the first two, that kind of thing. Whereas, as I mentioned to you earlier, this one over here, you can give any four. It doesn't have to be the first four. Remember, that was our description one where I said, rather just give them a little extra information and let the marker decide what they will or won't allocate a mark to. Now, if you did like this video and you found it very useful as you prepare for an exam or a test, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on so you know when I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.